All right, how's everyone doing? So it's uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, I have a little time, so I figured I'd help a friend out. A buddy of mine asked me to uh, work on his helmet a little bit. It's, it's. I think it's a pretty simple job what we're gonna do here. But uh, he basically had the dome that was sitting a little bit too uh, high on his brow. He wanted it sitting a little lower, so I just did some work to the uh, inside of the dome and to the top of the actual face mask to get that dome to sit a little lower. And additionally, he had some scratches and some uh, dings in the helmet, and he just wanted me to go ahead and try to repaint it for him. So I said, yeah, sure, no problem, easy enough, okay? Luckily, most of the uh, scratches that were on the helmet were not going through the initial clear coat. So they were just mostly superficial on the clear coat, so a little bit of sanding, and that got rid of those. Uh, on the face mask, however, okay, you can see that here in this section here, that I had to go through the paint all the way down to the fiber mask, okay, that gel coat. And then on the bottom as well, there was a very deep scratch there, a very deep scratch there. So I had to uh, go sand down through the clear coat, through the base coat, all the way down to the, uh, the fiber mask there, and then just you know, sand that off, make it nice and smooth for it. Uh, so I can be ready for paint. Uh, on the note of being ready for paint, all I did, this did have automotive paint and automotive 2K clear coat on it already. All I did was use a uh, scuff pad um, and just go ahead and scuff all the clear coat down. You have to do that. If you don't scuff the clear coat, the next base coat that you put on top of this isn't going to have something to adhere to. So you have to go ahead and scuff the uh, clear coat a little bit with either a scuff pad or maybe 400 grit sandpaper. And I went ahead and did that to both pieces. All right. So what we have here is the face mask. Okay. So a dark faded helmet, and then the dome part. Helmet. So all I'm going to do in this video guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the process that I do. Uh, I use all automotive paints. I'm going to put a uh, automotive base coat first. I'm going to let that dry up. And it's a pretty hot day, so it should dry fairly quickly. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and throw the uh, clear coat on it. Automotive paints, unlike rattle pans, Okay, so, hey, I use a lot of spray cans, okay? I love using spray cans, I think it's very simple. I go to the store, I pick up a can, and I, I start using it. But, if you want to finish a project in one day, you can't use rattle cans, okay? You need a lot of time for that type of paint to cure. And what I really love about automotive uh, paints is that, especially the base coat, it's dry in minutes, okay? And once it's dry, you can go ahead and by the clear coat. Now that clear coat is going to take some time to cure, but by then your project's done. Okay, so you put it away, let it cure for a couple of hours. Uh, I'd say it's done maybe in about two hours, but I give it about six hours, and sometimes I just put it away, I don't even touch it till the next day. Okay, and it's uh, the hardener has already hardened, and you're ready to go and you can touch it. Okay, but don't mess with it after clear coat, just put it somewhere and leave it alone. All right. Uh, that's it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one to the side a little bit. Let's turn on the dome. All right. I already have my spray gun ready and the paint's already loaded, ready to go. The wind is coming from this side a little bit, so I'm going to have to paint in this direction, guys. I apologize, but you know I'll, I'll move this around a little bit and I'll show it to you guys as, uh, as I go. Okay. So here we go. Let's get started. If the compressor turns on, I apologize, but it's part of this. All I'm doing is hitting it with air, all right, and uh, just taking off any last minute.
Again, I apologize for that compressor sound there, but... So what I'm doing is go over this one time with a quick pass, and I just make sure I have enough coverage on it, okay? And that's it. That's coat number one, okay? And you can see already that it is looking much better than it was already, okay? And I will do three coats of this on this helmet, okay? All right, I'll do three coats of the base coat. Now you can see it's got a very nice sheen to it. Now, this is a matte finish using a matte finish on this there's no need to use uh, a satin like you would use in a rattle can or high gloss or anything like that it's a matte base coat and then you go ahead and hit it with the uh, once it's ready and you're done with your three coats you go ahead and hit it with the clear coat and it's just going to go ahead and bring out that beautiful shine that you're looking for that automotive shine okay so i'm going to put this aside at the face mask I'm going to do the same thing with the face mask. In order to save time, I'm just going to go ahead and go over the first coat. Maybe I'll do the second coat of this with you guys. And then I'm just going to go ahead and keep painting. I'll show you guys the uh, finished product at the end. Okay? Here we go. We're doing the face mask. Uh, I apologize again, but i got to bring this over because my horse is getting hung up. Can't have that. So we got to slide this over a little bit. There we go. All right. There we go. Much better. Number one for the face mask. Again, I'm not looking for full 100% coverage. What I'm looking for is to start laying that base coat down, covering most of the helmet. Okay, as you can see, there's still areas here, there's still areas over here. Okay, so I'm not looking for full coverage yet. Just looking to lay that first base coat down. Full coverage will start happening during the second and third coats. Guys, automotive paints lays down beautifully, okay? It's beautiful, all right? And you guys saw that while I was painting, the helmet tried to uh, fall over and commit suicide. It's just testing my uh, 
Jedi reflexes. So I'll put that away over here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the dome again. Go from the dome. And like I told you guys, this stuff dries very quickly. So, a little spot here accumulating some dust. So, the paint is already dry. It's already dry to the touch. Okay? It's already dry to the touch. Go ahead and start that next coat on this. Paint guys, long strokes. You can overlap your paint by about 50%. Okay, but just keep the brush moving, don't hold it in one place for a long period of time. Just what I do is I put air first, and then I go ahead and press the trigger the rest of the way, and that's the uh, paint out. So just keep the brush moving, do not stop moving. All right, long, even strokes. That's it. Long, even strokes. And like I told you, this stuff lays down beautifully. Looking really good. show you guys how I mix my uh, clear okay um, maybe some of you guys might be wondering how to do that or maybe some of you guys might ask it later on as a question in the comments so I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you how I do it um, it's it's fairly easy you're basically gonna need these two components right here okay so this is your uh, actual clear all right I'm using a company called Custom Paints. For this type of project, guys, we're not painting cars or we're not doing anything too, too high end or anything. So just pick up whatever clear coat is inexpensive or you like to use. I've used these guys in the past. I'm not sponsored by them in any way or anything like that. The products are very good, and uh, you know they work. They work very well. So you're gonna need this. It's the clear, and this is your activator or your hardener. Okay. So you're gonna need these two parts. This particular brand, you're gonna mix two parts clear coat and then one part activator, okay? Uh, some of them are four to one, some might be three to one. Uh, I stick with the two to ones, okay? So two parts clear coat, one part activator, okay? So additionally, what I am gonna do today is, I'm gonna go ahead and add one part reducer as well, okay? Why am I going to do that? Well, two reasons. This is actually a slow reducer, okay? 
There's regular reducer, there's slow, and then there's like uh, super slow or something like that. When you use a vehicle, all right, it tends to leave a, a what they call orange peel, okay, which is that little bumpy layer, okay, that you can kind of like wet sand down a little bit and buff, and it gets to be a little smoother, okay. But to minimize the amount of uh, orange peel that I get on the projects, I do two things. One is that I put the pressure on the gun a little higher. So if I was spraying at 22, 25, I bring it up to 32, something like that, okay? 32, sometimes even 35. I want the pressure on the gun coming out uh, a lot harder, okay? And the reducer also thins the clear coat a little more to where it applies it in a thinner coat as opposed to a thick layer of clear coat coming out of the gun, okay? So it's a thinner clear coat going on and it allows for a nicer, uh, like a finer laying down of the clear coat, if that makes any sense, okay? Uh, the only issue with that is that if you thin your clear coat down a little bit, you have to be careful for runs, okay? I mentioned that this is a slow reducer, all right? That's basically gonna help it dry faster in this heat, okay? It's gonna help it dry a little faster in the heat and humidity, okay? So, here we go. This here is a very small solo cup, and this is what I'm gonna use as the part, okay? So, two of these, one of these, uh, and one of these. All right, that's it. And this is about an ounce. It's kinda of like a shot glass, all right? So it's gonna be about an ounce. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix those up. So I can open these. Clear coat, so you're gonna want two parts of this stuff. One. Two parts of that. Seal that back up. Now you can store these for a very long time on the shelf, guys. Okay, you can just store them for a very long time. Just make sure they're properly sealed. Okay. Uh, now once you add this activator, okay, once you add this activator, you're going to be on the clock, all right? Now this stuff, you're going to have some time to work with it, all right? It's not going to be hardening for a while, so like I told you, it's going to take a couple of hours to harden, so in order for that process not to start on me prematurely, I'm going to add the reducer first. Lastly, I'll add the hardener, okay? The activator. That's all done. Seal this up very tight. Cut this away. this up, Now that is filled up to about right here, so it gives me roughly about four ounces of clear coat, which is more than enough to finish the, uh, the helmet, okay? So all I do, I got the gun, clear coat's ready to go, load it right in. Now I did clear the gun, uh, clean the gun very well. There is no black paint left in there. Okay. Um, so that's uh, very important too. And that's it, guys. That's how I mix it clear, get it ready to spray, and that's it. We're ready to go here. I'm going to go ahead and start spraying.
All right, so I promise to show you guys the finished product here as far as the uh, helmet after the three coats. There it is. You see, it's very nice sheen to it. Very nice base coat. Okay, it is completely dry to the touch. All right, it's looking very nice. Face mask. Again, base coat laid down very nicely. It's a perfect canvas to lay down that clear coat now. Alright, so let's talk about the clear coat. I'm going to put my mask on for this. Clear coat has a lot stronger uh, fumes to it and the paint. And I should be painting without the uh, mask anyway. But I, I want to keep talking to you guys how to do this. So I'm going to talk you through the clear coat process and how I'm going to do it. It's going to be three layers. It's always better to lay it on. It's, it's a typical uh, the same, okay? A small amount goes a long way. Okay, so the first coat is going to be what we call a tacky coat. So all I'm going to do is lay some clear coat on there and let it dry for about 10 minutes. All right, that's it. Once that happens, it's going to actually give the second coat, all right, something to stick to. Uh, the second coat is what we call a wet coat. All right, so the first coat is a tacky coat, all right, to give it something to uh, stick to. Think about what I told you guys in the beginning, kind of like when I scuff a clear coat to get the base coat to stick to it. I'm doing the same thing, but I'm doing it with the clear coat as I go. Okay, so I'm gonna put the clear coat on fairly quick, all right? And then I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna work on the face. Put the clear coat, the tacky coat on the face. I'm gonna let that dry, all right? And we'll be coming in and out, okay? Depending on how uh, things are looking, I'll either stop to talk to you guys or I'll just keep working on it and I'll you know, I'll cut the video as we go, all right? But uh, that's basically in a nutshell what I'm gonna be doing. Now, I did bring out, I have this little rig here where I tied a, uh, I do a PVC pipe to a lazy Susan that I picked up, and it really helps to, you know, paint the helmets, okay? Just spin them around as you go, and that way I don't have to keep moving the carpet around. But uh, I was using it on something else earlier, so I was able to free it up. All right, so here we go. We got my little mask on here.
So again, not perfect looking yet. That's just the first coat. It's gonna appear like it's got some orange peel on it. It's gonna look really bad, okay? That's all you want. You just want some grippiness for the next coats to, to uh, have something to adhere to, okay? So we're gonna let this dry for 10 minutes and then I'll go ahead and add the second and third coats, okay? I'll get back with you guys. Okay. Tacky coat has been laid on and it's dried. Now, when I say dry, I don't mean it's completely dry. You can't go ahead and put your hand on this. It's uh, doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It's tacky, okay? So it's a little sticky and it's gonna let the uh, wet coat, which is the next coat, uh, adhere to it, okay? So here we go. First coat of wet coat, all right? So this is coat number two.
Now that, my friends, is a beautiful thing. Okay? So, I'm looking at these things, and... The face is actually looking pretty good. So I might leave that as is, okay? Just two coats. That is actually looking really, really good. All right, I might just leave that two coats. The dome, might hit it with one more coat. And I gotta say, the face is looking really, really nice. I think it's done. Yeah. Looks like that's gonna be good for that. I'm gonna set this aside. And I'll do the same process for the dome a third time, and I'll show you guys the finished products. Alright. Hey everyone. Alright, so it's been a couple of days. Uh, since I started the Darth Vader helmet and I was finally able to get around to finishing it up. So let me show you what I have here. And there it is. There's the finished product. I had to wait for the clear coat to cure completely. And then I went ahead and added the details. I just went ahead and painted the nose area silver. Added the aluminum tusks. And added the rubber weather strip at the neck there that's just about it give you guys a little side view here back on the front the other side you guys can see that that automotive 2k clear coat makes all the difference in these projects So like I said, it looks pretty good. I hope that Lord Vader is pleased with it because I don't want to get like force choked out by him or anything like that. But I think that he will be pleased. Alright. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, paint um, tutorial. Uh, I expanded a little bit on the clear coat aspect of it, so I hope that you guys were able to pick up some tips there. And I also put some pictures up on my IG page and my Facebook page, so if you want to check those out, go ahead out there and check those uh, pictures out as well. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, you guys keep building. Take care.